Hello friends, welcome to the Urban Homesteading Channel. I am Professor DIY. Behind the camera is Elpida, and somewhere around here is Mrs. DIY. What does a cinder fence picket? It damages the splash guard and an SSD have in common, Elpida. I don't know, that's some crazy. <laughs> that's some crazy combination of stuff. Okay, they are leading us to creating this device here which is an SSD storage, storage box for our computer. Okay, cool. So today we're going to do something really unique. We are going to create an external SSD storage because I tried to find one to purchase. My SSDs were all over the place and they look quite similar to each other, if you can see. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't find it for any price. So it was not even a matter, it was too expensive. I couldn't find it. So I decided to make one. If you want to make one too for about five dollars, stick around and we're going to show you every step as we usually do. So here we are in in uh, in, in our office where we usually do all our, our editing for the channel, right? And one of the problems we have is that uh, a limitation of the Mac Mini and the studio, we're going to talk in another episode, but I have to depend a lot on SS... External SSDs. External SSD drives. And there is no good solution to actually organize them. I, at any given time, I have three or four attached to them, which create a chaos, a cable chaos here, right? So I, I was thinking to find a way to organize it, to make it looking better. So that's part of our design today, part of the project, to find a way to organize our SSDs. So Mother Nature is throwing us a curve again today. It is raining and it is cool. And I don't mind the cool as much, but you can hear the rain nicely falling on our metal roof, right? So we're going to go to the shop. So the struggle is real. One of the problems we face when it's raining is that the shop is much smaller than it might look on, uh, on your screens, right? With the three of us and all the equipment we have, we have to move everything around constantly in order to do anything around the shop. So we just wanted to show you that our struggle is real. Feel our pain. I found that the best tool to make 45 cuts is my table saw. So I've been very consistently using it. The key to have a nice 45 is a very steady rate of feeding the material through your table saw. And then just feel for any strange behavior of the saw, uh, a very whining motor or great resistance might tell you something is wrong. Once you have the width set, simply turn it over and you're going to have a two perfect 45 without having to continuously count and count again. Also, once you set your saw, make all the cuts you need to do of the same dimension and that will ensure your accuracy without having to reset constantly. When you follow the simple steps, you're going to have consistently great results with your table saw. Okay. <clears throat> because we cannot get all our pieces out of this single piece, we're going to, to fortify another piece. Without any doubt, the table saw is the most dangerous tool in your saw. But you must not be afraid of it. When you have fear while you're using a tool, you're much more likely to have an accident. So respect the saw and use common sense and you're going to be very successful in using your saw in your own soap. And if one was not, then we would have to use that for the thinner ones. But The most important part of your table saw is actually the blade. Even if you have an inexpensive saw, invest in good quality blades and you're going to have exceptional results. So keep that always in mind. Your blade is much more important than the bride of your saw. So we have nice 45s now. Yeah, that's not what we're doing right now, but you know, you can see we have nice 45s. Mm -hmm. All awesome. right. After cutting my 45s, I moved to cut the pieces in length. We're going to use a little over one scrap piece for all of our cuts, and we're going to cut them all in the, in the legs at the same time. So we have a lot of those pieces of plywood that we purchased to, to burn, you know, for burning processes, and we're going to use them as the the bottoms of uh, basically the shelves the shelves right mm -hmm. and the reason we're using that because these are one eighth 
-hmm. So we have a one eighth blade. We can make nice easy one eighth cuts. Mm -hmm. A lot of one eighths happening here. Mm -hmm. right. So what we did here is we want this. It's got a. It's just got to line up with that. Okay. There. It's gonna be inside mm -hmm. the the corner of the. Right. So essentially. Angle. Right. We're talking about having the shelves here, and because the angles all line up to make the interior of the box, what we actually measured for was there. But then accounting for the dado blade cuts that we need to make, we put it in about a quarter of an inch so that then um, the sides will be the correct width. Or so we hope. We hope. We hope so. Yeah. I guess I can do it without So that. we are redoing the 45s on these two pieces for that reason. Plus it is faster and easier to cut two pieces one time versus seven pieces. It minimizes error and increases speed. Which also means that if you have the piece that was substantially narrower, this would be the piece you're going to use, right? Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> on occasion, lumber is not exactly how we want you to do. Do we need to match? Sides. Do we care? Okay. Once you have dialed in your desired dimension, do not move your uh, fence again. That way you assure your accuracy and you do not have to fiddle with it. Also, do not touch the wood until the blade has stopped moving. Well, now, the next step will be to make our dado lines, right? Right. These drives, and we remember we're making it specifically for these drives, mm -hmm. they are one-fourth in thickness. So what we want it, uh, double that yeah. to come in and out. So we want our data to be about half an inch apart. Okay. All right. So these are our two sides and we're going to cut the data both at the same time. So we know they're aligned, right? Mm -hmm. So to achieve that, we're going to use our favorite method of attaching them from the other side with some uh, painter's tape. And it's just to keep the two pieces aligned so that our dados will be perfectly aligned as well. So we have a piece of wood so we can make sure they're... Do we have a piece of wood? Do you, do you even know where you are? No, where am I? Do I we have a piece of wood? North Carolina, right? Do we have a piece of wood? I'm just saying here. We are in the shop. There is so much wood here, I don't even know what to do with it. And wow, it actually looks like we have two full cedar boards. Look, there's one back there, and then there's one over here, plus our scraps. I'm almost questioning... We, we like cedar. I'm almost questioning, should we... Is this wood beautiful enough? To just oil it instead Well, of, we cannot oil it because it's electronics. Mm, but we can, Well, not the inside, just the outside. But... Or clear coat it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. What do you guys think? Instead of the... So his original idea was to paint it a metallic to match the housing of the Mac Mini and the other, like, drive expansion that you have. Um, but now, because we're using cedar, it's such a beautiful wood. Should we just... Uh, well, we'll see how we Clear coat it. Because it. it is a really beautiful thing. So we'll put another one here to reinforce so it doesn't move. So we found this piece of wood that... We're going to use as our spacer, and it gives us a nice, uh, comfortable fit for our drive, right? We do not want it very snug here because we want air to move through the drive to cool it, right? We do not want it to be so tight that this will fail because they don't get cooled. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So since we decided this is our thickness, we are just aligning it here, and we made the mark. And now all we're going to have to do is turn it over because we need to... Uh, run dados on these sides, right? We're going to turn it over and we're going to start making our cuts. Once again, our sled proves its value because it allows us to make repeatable and very, very controlled cuts time after time after time while also keeping a 90 degree angle. Without the sled, this would have been a much more time consuming and more difficult process. So if you have not yet built one, build a table saw sled. You will never regret it. All right, now we should have one dado. Mm -hmm. And we're going to use this, right? Mm -hmm. 
make another line and go from there. Now, the only critical thing is do not move your piece now, right? Right. All right, mm -hmm. if you help me align it. And so the idea here is because we want that full half inch space, we're aligning the line with the left hand side so that the blade then takes the cut out of uh, out of the knot of our space. I don't know how else to say that. We don't want the cut to come out of our half inch space. We want it to come out of just the wood itself. This doesn't look straight to me. So it needs to go that way a little bit then. So we'll keep lining those up. We'll go across and hopefully we're going to get six or seven out of this, depending on how many. Space. Yeah, it's not However, critical. just based on this, uh, this setup. Right. Okay. So again, this is how we're lining it up. We've made uh, four cuts already. So the way we're going to space it out for the next one is using our half inch spacer piece, lining that up with the cut, the blade, the opening, and we make a pencil mark on the other side. And now we can move that piece over so that that pencil mark aligns with the left side of our opening. Again, that ensures that our blade goes through wood that is not to be used for our space. We don't want to cut into our half inch space here. And make sure that you're square here. Mm -hmm. Flush against the sled. Yep. And this can actually be a nice finish for something, right? I mean, Yeah, for sure. So, and then you can make this kind of cut and you can have squares and all mm -hmm. kinds of neat things happening. Makes a nice surface finish when you're looking to add visual interest to a piece. But for yep. this, we wanted to just demonstrate that by attaching those two pieces together and doing the lines, the dados all at the same time, that ensures that they are all perfectly in alignment so that we shouldn't have any issues with our shelving. Yep. So we have set our uh, pieces together that create our box. And we use our uh, normal trick, the, the uh, painter's tape, to hold the uh, joint together. And as you can see, we have very, very nice miters all around. And this is our dry fit, so you can see what it's This is our dry fit. Into. So the next step is we're going to put glue, and we are going to have ready another piece of taper for the last joint, right? Mm -hmm. And again, you, as a reminder, you only put glue on one of the two joining sides. You don't put glue on both. You make sure that your alignment is correct. And then you let glue dry. With glue applied, this is now the final assembly. The final fold up. It's the final fold down. Tell me when you're ready. Yeah. And while glue dries, we are going to go out and uh, purchase things that we do not have to finish the project. Okay. And again, the glue does most of the work. The brad nails help hold it in place. Because I'm impatient. But we're still going to give it some time to dry. Really nice thing. It's going to be a really nice little enclosure. Okay, you put uh, a couple of those things in. And this is the idea is that these little cards are going to become our shelves. And the drives would still have plenty of space to fit in there. Because can you push them all the way so we can see the back? Now, <clears throat> if you want it here, you can put two per uh, line. We don't because the purpose we made this longer is to accommodate the cables, right? Mm -hmm. And 
And then, of course, the screen, we, well, we didn't talk about the screen, but... That's one of the things we don't have right now. Can you get me the drive, please? And as you can see, this has plenty of space, right? Mm -hmm. And in the back, now we have space for cable management. The cables, yeah. Which was the whole idea. Right. So, Alpida, why did we use uh, cedar for this? It's not going to live outside. And now it creates the dilemma for me that I don't know if I want to uh, make it look like metal or not. Right, because the cedar grain is so beautiful. Correct, it's, it's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. But the reason we did it is because it's extremely light, like pick it up and mm -hmm. see. And even with seven drives in it, it's still going to be reasonably well, yeah. light. And the, it's the cords that will be a little more... Um... The drives themselves are very light, yeah. unless you use hard drives, which you can. This can fit a 3.5 hard drive or an mm -hmm. SSD, right? You cannot okay. fit the bigger drives. So, uh, so far, I'm very pleased. We need to go out <coughs> and hunt for two things. Two things? Three things. No, two, two things. Two, three. I want a, a, a screen here, both for looks, but more importantly, I don't want to put a solid wood, a piece of solid wood here because we want air to circulate. Right. As the drive gets warmer, it will pull air, it will become a, a normal fan, right? It will, it will just push air through and it will cool the drives. And aesthetics, of course, right? Right. So we'll find something that can fit this purpose. We don't know what yet, but we're going to find it. And we're going to do that. And the second part, I'm looking at this box and it looks really nice. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, should we metalize it? Because that is the original plan, was to metalize it, right? Mm-hmm. And we don't know. I mean, you know, we can later make another one and do a different finish. But for now, we'll, we'll figure it out, right? Right. So we use cedar because it is light. You don't want to use a, a heavy wood. Cedar. 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 cedar, cedar. cedar. Uh, <laughs> and it, it did come out very nicely. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Okay. Let's go. So what are you cooking, Elvida? I don't know. What are you cooking? Well, this is not, that has not been purchased for its intended purpose. In fact, it's going to be sacrificed for... Sacrificed? Sacrificed. You mean it doesn't work like that? No. Are you sure? We have to cut it to create a little <coughs> frame around it. So this is going to be used as our uh, screen, right? It prevents uh, dust from getting in but will allow air from getting in and will create a little more visual interest than this, right? What that looks like. Okay. Yeah? Uh, yeah, I love that right there. Mm -hmm. Like this? Yeah. So I have to hold it and yeah. I see, okay. So we're going to, to start by cutting this. Okay. So we remove the little uh, cells from the unit and we put the unit upside down or in any way on you want. End. With on the its open, end. Mm -hmm. On our little screen material. And using a, a simple um, utility, knife. utility knife, we cut the correct shape, the shape we need it. Okay. Or so we thought. <laughs> we did. Very carefully, yes. Ta-da! Mm. Be very careful when doing this because it can poke you. Yeah. It will poke you. Yeah. But now you've got the correct size screen and you can create the frame. Right and then it'll attach to the front. Okay. So we had some pieces of cedar that had already been cut at 45 to potentially make like a frame or something. And so we milled those down using the saw here to essentially the same width. Mm -hmm. Just tuck one side of those and cut a couple pieces. And now we're cutting it to size so that we can then make the other 45s to make the four sides for this frame. Because we're going to try and have the illusion of uh, metal here, we do not want any seams to sew. So we use a little bit of uh, wood putty, and now we're accelerating the drying process. So we can start the painting process. Too many processes. Mm -hmm. And you will need to do just a little bit of sanding to bring that back down to flush, right? Yeah but it has to be dry first. Right. What I'm doing is I'm knocking off little pieces of the screen. Okay. 
Again, this is not a necessary step and a power sander is not needed. You can do a light sanding by hand or not do it at all. It is totally up to you. I just wanted a very smooth surface just for safety and to avoid anyone getting cut. A little bit more and we'll be done. So this is the first for us. We are going to cover this beautiful wood with metal paint because we want it to match our decor in the office, which is mostly metal looking things. Metal looking things, right? Can you spin? So what we're doing is we're making sure that our screen is not damaged, right? Blocked. Blocked, whatever. And it defeats the whole purpose of having it, right? That's why I wanted that one. So as you can see, it's coming along. This is the part of the process I don't truly enjoy because I lack patience, right? So as Mrs. DIY will tell you. But this will require several coats to look the way we want it to look. So we will be back with you after a few coats. Here we are. And as you can see, this is not a very big box, right? And in the back, we simply are going to just slide the, the selving in. Very exciting, right? Riveting cinematography. Mm -hmm. Now you can double this up, but I think it's better not to so we have space for the cables, right? Right. Did I miss one? Nope, one more. Nope, next one down. But I have an extra one. You have a couple extra. I just gave you a stack of them. Okay. So here's how it looks in the back without anything in it. Mm -hmm. And you can see we have enough space for cable management here. Right. And here is the front. Now, <clears throat> if you were to use this for hard drives, you will have to add some, uh, add some active cooling. So maybe a fan in the back. We're mm -hmm. going to use it for SSDs and maybe one hard drive. So active cooling is not necessary for us. Okay. Now, what is the cost of this? Even if you were to buy this, the cedar posts, they're about $3 in our area, right? Mm -hmm. And we spent a buck 25 for the little, uh, what is that, a splash guard? I don't yeah, know. splatter guard. So you're doing a, a project under $5, right? Well, plus your little, your little pieces. They were like 25 cents a piece is what it works out to. What little pieces? Oh, yeah. The shelves. Uh, the selving. The little shelves. So you're doing about a around five dollar project for something that actually doesn't exist in fact the idea of this project as i said in the beginning was because i was looking to purchase something to organize my ssds my external ssds and i could not find something to buy and i think five dollars for something you cannot purchase sounds like a pretty good deal to me yeah so ladies what do you think that was something that was really my idea and for my use what are your thoughts going to be an effective way to manage all your drives. And how about painting? The blast with me of painting nice wood. I had a hard time with that, I must admit. It depends on your application and where you want to put it and how it will fit in with your uh, overall design and scheme of things. Yeah, I mean, I think it was the right choice for this. 
but still it's it kind of painful to paint the nice wood. One of the things that we saw have done a little better is to seal the wood <clears throat> before we paint it. So it will be even smoother than it is. I mean, it's not bad, but it is, you still can see the grain. Well, it's kind of interesting and it gives it a, a nice look of, uh, you can still see the grain behind the paint. And I don't think that's bad. Some people actually might pay extra for that kind of a finish. Yep. It's a metallic green. So this is our episode for today and we hope you enjoyed it. If you did, we'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the other button twice. Share, like, subscribe. Let us know, did you like this episode? Do you like us building those creative ideas for you? And if not, if, if you do, we are going to build more in the future. From Professor <laughs> DIY, Mrs. DIY, and Elpida, let's build something together.